When I was a kid, you could order plans for a steam engine from the back of every kid's magazine. And the, the one that you usually got, the plans you usually got were for a wobbler type like the one you're seeing. Now, uh, this was printed on a 3D printer out of plastic and it's huge compared to the ones you would get. This has a 1.75 inch or 4.5 centimeter uh, bore diameter in the uh, piston here and normally they would be uh, somewhere around less than two centimeters, less than an inch by far. So yeah, um, but of course, you know, I always wanted to have something like this. This will obviously not run on steam because it's made out of a plastic that starts to melt at uh, about 180 centigrade and it'll get tacky below that somewhere. And of course water boils at 100 degrees, so steam is, you know, it's, the steam's gonna be somewhere around the point where the plastic starts to deform but it will run on compressed air. Okay, so let's take a look at this and then we'll do some close-ups. This is the uh, connecting rod and behind here would normally be a flywheel, but I've got the uh, motor turning it for the demo. And then we have a, uh, a connection to our connecting rod and that is attached to the piston and we'll take all that apart and look at it. This is the cylinder, and you notice the cylinder is rocking back and forth, and that's very important because this is how it opens and closes the intake and exhaust valves. Okay, so that's all we can see from this side. Uh, let's do some close-ups and see how this thing works. So here we are. We've got the flywheel back there where it should be. And down this way you can see the piston. Um, I'll roll it over this way so you can see the back side. And we'll just remove the bottom stand. And here you can see the intake and exhaust valves. Now, depending on uh, whether you use this for the intake or this for the intake, it makes the uh, engine run one direction and the other one will make it run the opposite direction. Uh, the interesting thing is this can also be used as a compressor or a vacuum pump. Uh, so while it's running, if you uh, connect, uh, one will be uh, sucking in air and one will be blowing out air. So if you use those, then uh, you will have a either compressor or a uh, vacuum pump. But uh, again, it was designed to originally to be a steam engine. One of the important things is for the cylinder to move up and down. You can see where that happens. As the crank comes this way, the piston is forced to move up and down and these holes on the back become the intake and exhaust and the wobble of the cylinder chooses whether it's time for intake or exhaust and we can see as we turn that back and forth maybe we can see inside the holes yes you can see it's on the lower one and now on the upper one and that is how it uh, knows, that is how the, the valving works. So there's no complex valving. Yeah, they guaranteed that you could build this in any garage shop. Okay, well, let's uh, take it apart a little bit more and look on the insides. I've taken off the flywheel back here, and then we'll just push these out off of the bearings they're in. There we go, and you can see the bearings here. And then you can see the intake and exhaust there. And let's look at the piston first. Back here, you can see this is the hole. And depending on which of these two it's lined up with, it's either taking in steam or compressed air. And, uh, or it is exhausting the steam or compressed air. This is the uh, pin that it, that it uh, wobbles around. And, and let's take out the piston and take a look at it. So you can see this has a huge bore. But uh, something interesting to note about the piston is that it has a solid connection here. Most pistons will have a pin and it will flex. But it, this must have a solid connection because it, you want this uh, the, the uh, cylinder to wobble and it's that solid connection that makes it wobble. So when it's connected to the crank over here and this is going around, it's turning around, it forces this to wobble around the pin like we saw earlier, like that. 
And again, that makes this choose one of those two holes as it's operating. I'll bet y'all thought I forgot the demo. Well, okay, I did. But here it is now, okay? Three, two, one. And let's try that with a compressed air tank. Okay, well that's it. This is for sure this time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your home DIY projects.